We're going to use some command line tools. Now, I have logged into View Portal and I have chosen the Access Server. So, first of all, let me show you where these are. They're actually located in the S drive. And we're looking for the directory for this class. So, CFDI 320. And what we're going to be working with is the Sleuth Kit. And all of the applications we're going to be working with are here. The thing is, though, these are console applications or command line applications. You can't just run them as though you were running a graphical program. If I were to do this, it's going to run. It's going to show me help and immediately close. So we need to be in the command line. So I'm going to open up a command prompt here. And just to make this a little bit easier, I am going to change the size just use that and let's say 20. Okay, so I need to get into the S drive. So S and then CD CFDI 320. And now from here, if I get a directory listing, I've got a couple of images here. I've actually got looks like three images I can play with. So I'm going to run some of the sleuth kit programs. And in order to do that, I need to specify the path to the program. I can't just type MMLS, for example, because Windows has absolutely no idea where that is. So I need to say sleuth kit, and you'll find the tab key very helpful here. And now I can run MMLS on, let's say, ntfs.dd. MMLS is going to give me a list of all of the partitions and where they are actually located. So you can see in this case, we've got one partition on this drive. It is an NTFS partition, and it starts at offset 128. Okay, so once I've got that, there are a number of other programs that I can use. So, for example, I could get a file system status or statistics on the file system. So I'm going to say sleuth kit, and again, I'm going to use the tab key to make it easier for me. And then bin, and then fsstat. And now on ntfs.exe, or .dd rather, this is going to generate an error for me because it has no idea what I'm actually looking at. So I need to actually specify an offset here. The offset is given to us. This is the beginning of the file system, the 128. So that's my offset. And fsstat should be able to figure out the rest of it for me. In this case, it did. It gave me some information about NTFS and all of the details around that. So once I've got fsstat, now I could actually start looking for information here about some of the different sectors or clusters or blocks on the drive. So I can do sleuth kit, and you'll see I'm just typing a few characters. I've been talking about the tab key, I haven't really explained it. So if I type just a few characters here, I hit tab, Windows will actually complete it for me based on the best match that it can find. So I can also run the program iStat, which is going to give me information about a particular block on the drive. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say first my offset is 128, and then my image is ntfs.dd, and then I'll just pick a random block number. So you can see for block number 12, it looks like we've got some standard information values and some header values. Let's pick a different number here. Maybe we can get one with maybe a file name associated with it somewhere. And I'm not seeing anything here. Of course, I could do something more simple. I could just get a directory listing on it. Minus O again, 128 and TFS. Dd, and this is going to give me a file listing. So you can see all of the files that are actually on this particular disk image. And I can get some help 
from FLS so you can see all of the different flags that are available. If I just type minus H, it's going to give me all of the different flags that are available. So I could recurse on directory entries, display the full path for each file. I could specify the image type if it doesn't know what the image type is, if it can't figure that out for us. In our case, we're going to not have any problems at all there. So I could do minus A here is going to give me basically the same information. What I'm going to get in this case is the dot files here where I may not otherwise get those. So you can see we've got a number of tools and anything that you want to run, get into the command line and you could just do minus H on it. So let's say you wanted to do a find here, minus H, and here's all of the details for F find. So here are the different utilities. You're going to find MMLS handy. You're going to find FLS handy. iStat is going to be handy for you. And there are probably some others here that I am overlooking, but there are a lot of programs that come with the Sleuth Kit. And of course, if you are interested in just doing a little bit of reading about them, certainly the book has some details, but you can also just do a little Google searching for the Sleuth Kit. If we could actually get some response here. We'll open Chrome back up again since it just closed itself. And let's just look up Sleuth Kit. And you'll see the Sleuth Kit dot here. If we go to Sleuth Kit, you can see documents. And then you can do a little bit of reading on the help documents for all of the tools. There'll be all of the command line tools. And you can do a little bit of reading on some of the different tools and what they do. So you can see iCAT extracts data, BlockCAT extracts contents of a given data unit, and we've got FSstat, FFind, FLS, all of these great tools that are available to us. So that's how you go about using the Sleuth Kit. Remember, you're going to need to be on the S drive and you're gonna to have to open up a command prompt. These are all command line utilities.